Hi everybody, I'm Julie Kerr, writer and director of the romantic comedy Geek Loves Punk. And on my email list, I had uh, someone request via my email list. They requested to know, um, they wanted tips on how to direct movies. So I directed a 90 minute romantic comedy. And I encourage all of you watching to direct a 90 minute movie for fun. <laughs> Okay, so if you have an interest in directing feature films, then I'm going to give you uh, a couple of tips on how to direct movies. Uh, in my case, it was a micro-budget movie, uh, but I've been told by my friends and family and uh, strangers on the internet, thank you very much, who are now my friends, uh, okay, but I've been told by strangers on the internet that the movie I made was really awesome, so uh, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that action. So what I'm going to do is give y'all, since I've done it, I directed a romantic comedy, which is 90 minutes and is like so awesome. It's so my friends and family and strangers on the internet have told me. I'm going to give you uh, three basic tips on what it takes to like direct a movie, a uh, micro budget movie, and you can like uh, uh, follow my advice and then make the greatest feature film ever made. That's my challenge to you. Or just, uh, or just make any kind of feature film that you want to make, like, at all. Oh, so first mini step, start with a short film, like, just, just make a short film. It's way less pressure. Make, like, a five minute or ten minute short film. Uh, no pressure, because, yeah, just do that first. So, um, by the time I made my feature film, just, just to let you know, I had made, um, what had I done? I'd already made a short film, but even then, I made two short films before I made my feature film. And then in college, uh, I attempted to make a feature film. Uh, oh, I'd made three short films by the time I made my feature film. But also, by the time I made my feature film, that was my third attempt at making a feature film. So the first time I tried to make a feature film was in college. I failed because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> And by then, back then, we didn't have high defi definition cameras, so I don't know. So two, um, the second time I tried to make a feature film, a group of us was going to make like a B-movie horror film, and it just sort of fell through, of kind of because of like uh, creative dynamics. Uh, yeah. I'm not proud of it. I was in my early 20s, so like I'd have to say... Uh, all of us collectively were, we were kind of being jerks. <laughs> I, I was young, so I, I, yeah, I'm not proud of it. But basically a group of us were going to make a B movie horror film. And then we were all jerks. I wasn't like a jerk jerk, but I could have been better. Um, also at the time I got a girlfriend and I just lost interest and I don't know. So the second time I tried to make a, uh, the second time I tried to make a feature film, it just, it, it fell through, it didn't work. Okay, so the third time I tried to make a feature film, it worked because I have one now available. All right, so so anyway, uh, step one or the little mini step before you make a feature film, make some short films first just to kind of get your feet wet, right? So that's my first thing. And also there's so no pressure on making a short film. So like just go for it with making a short film because it's not a big deal. A five minute film, a 10 minute film, whatevs. Uh, and not to say they aren't brilliant, um, there aren't super, super brilliant short films, there are. So not, I don't, I don't, I'm not like brushing it off. I'm just saying it's way, tends to be way less work and it's way less expensive. So, all right, so make the short films first, go crazy, go wild, do that first. Okay, but, um, but essentially, okay, so directing a movie, this is going to be kind of motivational. You're going to be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> then you're gonna be surprised. Eventually I'm gonna make a movie, uh, I'm sorry, a YouTube video straight up about cinematography, but uh, this is more about directing a feature film. Okay, step one to directing a feature film is know what you want. So knowing what you want, basically what that means is uh, my go-to um, uh, pretend movie that I like to talk about. Okay, let's say for some reason you wanna make a movie about killer clowns. <laughs> Okay, so let's say you're making a movie about killer clowns. Uh, I, I like to pick that one because it's probably something I'd never make, even though I love it. 
I love the movie It, which is about a killer clown. Uh, I love the one with Tim Curry. That was excellent. I like the new one that came out a couple years ago. That was awesome as well. So uh, just great movies about killer clowns. And there's another movie about killer clowns in space. I haven't seen it. I think it's kind of like a kind of like a B horror film. The concept sounds brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyway, so let's say you're gonna make a movie about killer clowns. You kind of have to know what you want. So what that means is, just what do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a comedy? Uh, do you want to make people laugh, or do you want it to be uh, scary? Do you want to make people get scared? Uh, you got you kind of have to pick so the tone, uh, but basically. What do you want the movie to be? Because it's it's actually with micro budget filmmaking, it's totally up to you. You're not gonna have like a studio uh, putting in their input. Also, want to say nothing wrong with the studio giving input if you're in that position. So I don't want to like villainize studios because behind every great tentpole movie was a studio like funding it and giving their opinions. Uh, one I can think of is I really like the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, the trilogy directed by Peter Jackson. So that's an example of uh, studio movies that, that I really, really liked. Um, so behind those three movies were studio people high-fiving each other. <laughs> I don't know too much. I have no first-hand um, experience with Hollywood. So, but, but I mean, hey, Hollywood's awesome. Like, God bless Hollywood. Okay, so God bless everybody. Okay, so anyway, um, but okay. But directing, know what you want, especially with micro-budget filmmaking, because you're not going to have studios telling you, oh, you can't do this, or you should do that, or you should do this. Um, essentially, it's, it's, all, it's all on you. <laughs> so, it's on you as to what you want, if we're talking killer clowns, it's up to you what you want the killer clown to look like. It's up to you, and you can have, like, art designers or storyboarders or uh, yeah people do storyboards i think you can do character design i think that's more of an animation thing but you could have character des designers design the clown for you uh but you but it but at the end of the day it's up to you what you want the clown to look like or feel like what are you trying to get the audience to feel that's going to determine what you want the clown to look like we're talking hypothetical by the way okay and also, like for me, if I did a kill or clown movie, this is so hypothetical. I would have a protagonist who's who's the hero of your story, and you gotta decide. So who is who is the hero of your story? And this is kind of going into screenwriting, but let's say the screenplay already exists. What do you want the the hero of the story to be? In my version, the hero would fight the clown. <laughs> but who is the hero? Is the hero like a really cool dude? who like works at a grocery store is the hero of the story like a cheerleader who is going to kick ass excuse my language is the protagonist you know, who do you want the hero to be okay now and that's kind of all i mean it's already there in the screenplay but still you're going to be casting right so now you have to cast the killer clown and then you got to cast the grocery store owner or worker and then you got to cast like the cheerleader whatever so casting is really important so uh, best special effect in the world is just a really, really great acting uh, acting performance. And I'll do another video about directing actors. But yeah, you're casting, so whenever you, you're auditioning actors, what's the feeling you're getting from them? Are, are, are they invoking, are you feeling scared if you're casting the, the clown? Are you laughing? Do you want the clown to be comedic? Totally up to you. Uh, same thing with the groceries, do you want the grocery store person to be like pretty <laughs> you know are you looking for eye candy uh, or are you looking for someone who has a more interesting looking face what kind of feeling are you getting from them are you feeling like empowered do you want the grocery store person to like kick butt or do you want the grocery store person to be kind of uh melancholy i don't it's totally up to you you're the director completely up to you uh, so you, you gotta know what you want. Locations, you know, if the if a scene's supposed to take place at like a carnival, do you want the carnival to be bright and pretty? Do you want it to be kind of creepy and decrepit? Like again, totally up to you. Because even if you get a screenplay, let's say you either wrote it or you bought it. Uh, look, once you buy the rights to the screenplay, or you bought it, or you own it, like you wrote it yourself, like you can. I hate to say this, but you can, and I, I write my own screenplay, so I'm fine with this, but once you own the screenplay, you can kind of do whatever you want with it, with all due respect to screenwriters. So I'll make it a video about screenwriting. <laughs>
I love screenwriters. I'm a screenwriter, so nothing but love for screenwriters. But since this video is about directing, uh, once you own the script, you can do whatever you want. So if the script says, really it's up to you. The script might say the carnival is decrepit, or the script might say the carnival is bright and pretty. It, it's, but even with that, it's completely up to you. You're the director. <laughs> so know what you want, and it's okay to want what you want. And what I mean by that is, uh, the reason why you got to make short film, short films first, make those first, you're going to figure out what your voice is. You're going to figure out the kind of stuff you want to say. By the time you sit down and make a feature film for the first time or have you, yeah, you got, you just, it's up to, it's all on you. And my joke is with some of my friends who are interested in making movies, if you're sitting down to make a feature film and you feel like you might start to get a, a, a stomach ulcer, then you, my friend, are officially a director <laughs> of movies. <laughs> and I say that because it kind of is a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. It, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure. Okay, and then because you need to know what you want, you do need producers. Producers are your soulmates. Um, I can say the names of my producers like Gloria, um, oh, Tom, mainly Gloria and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> my movie was so micro budget, so so not too many producers on my movie. But and I can I can say the the names of my mentors. Uh, my filmmaking mentors was Alan, uh, Michael, and they're the folks I just called when I was like, er, what do I do? That <laughs> especially with directing, producing the movie, I was like, ah, I don't know what to do. Dad. Okay, so I would just. Luckily, I had mentors, and I could just call my friend Alan, who's just a really smart guy. Very, He's also very enthusiastic about filmmaking. He's made some short films, and he's just a really smart guy. He's about, I consider him kind of like an older brother. He's like about 10 years older than me, if that. But so I would call him and just ask him advice, because ask him for advice, just in general, because he's just great at giving advice. So I had some mentors I could talk to when I just, I just needed somebody to turn to. And also my producers, the other one was Candace, right, producers. So where I can just like bounce ideas off of them because I do want to hear their opinions because I respect them, they're smart, they're awesome. They read, they read the script, they understood the script, they understood what I was going for. So I could totally, and also Gloria, because it's micro budget, she was also a producer, but she also edited the film and she did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. So, but anyway, so um, the point is, you need to know what you want, and part of knowing what you want is also just having really great producers you can bounce your ideas off of and hear their opinions on stuff. So, um, but yeah, just letting you know, if you're directing a movie, especially a micro-budget -bu movie, my friend, it is all on you. <laughs> you gotta know what you want because you're gonna have a lot of people asking you what you want. You're gonna have costume designers, set designers, actors, Producers, sound people, location folks, you're just going to have a lot of people, post-production people, you're going to have a lot of people asking you what you want, and you just got to know what you want. <laughs> and it's okay to want, know what you want, like, but by, I would say once you've done the short film thing, you'll feel more confident in doing the feature film. My confidence, whatever, in feature filmmaking, it's not like I'm... God's gift to filmmaking. <laughs> That's not the approach I'm, I'm taking with it. There's no arrogance. There's confidence, but no arrogance. The confidence just comes from, I know this is for me, since I'm a spiritual person, I know this is what God wants me be, to be doing. And I know at the end of the day, even if you make a movie about killer clowns, so to speak, I know at the end of the day, my message is pretty positive. So if I made a movie about killer clowns, the message would still be positive, right? So um, my message would be, hey, don't be mean. So I'd have a killer clown who's being mean. And the, the, my genre would be horror with a little bit of comedy. So, uh, because I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, I don't know if you can see that. I have the book to prove. This really thick book. Yeah, that's right. I've read books on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Great book. It's called Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Myth, Metaphor, and Morality by Mark Field. Okay, whatever. So, like, because I like stuff like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, yeah, like if I did a movie about killer clowns, it would be a comedy, and then, um, but the message would be don't be mean, it would be like comedic horror film, and that kind of thing. But, so anyway, it can be any genre, just, um, but it, whatever, know what you want, and the reason why 
my confidence comes from making films. It's just I know this is what God wants me to do with my life. That's where the confidence comes from. It doesn't, it's not arrogance because, I don't know. I, I, I think there's no benefit at all to anybody when they're arrogant or whatever. So, um, okay. So, yeah. Step one to being a director, know what you want. Yeah, for sure. And the, the way you help to find out what you want is you make short films first. And then you make a feature film. Okay. Okay. So, step number two in directing a film. You control the tone of a film. Okay. So, a lot of people think that a lot of my friends who... Or one of my friends, she didn't know any better. She thought cinematography and film directing were the same thing. Sometimes they're the same thing, right? Sometimes the director and the cinematographer are the same people. Um, but right, but cinematography, cinematographers are geniuses. <laughs> I love cinematographers with all my heart. But cinematography is not the same thing as like film directing. So uh, cinematographers basically, they set up the lights and make stuff look gorgeous. Like gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So their job is super important because uh, they make things look stunning, right? So that's their job. Uh, but film directors, what you're doing when you direct a movie is you're actually just controlling the tone of a movie, which is super important. So if you think about any famous directors right uh they it feels like they're kind of if uh let's take uh, martin scorsese a martin scorsese film feels like a martin scorsese film right uh francis ford coppola his movies feel like a francis ford coppola movie right uh george lucas feels like a george lucas movie uh sophia coppola or the director of wonder woman a patty jenkins movie Feels like a Patty Jenkins movie. So, gosh, Wonder Woman was so good. Okay, so I'm so excited about the next Wonder Woman movie. So, oh, okay, so 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 directing a movie, you're really just setting the tone of the film. So, uh, if you think about um, modern day, if you think about uh, what Taika, I say his name so bad, Taika Waititi, I think I said his name. But basically, the director of the latest... Um, uh, Thor movie, Thor Ragnarok, and you notice how different that movie was from the other, from the first two installations of Thor. And actually, I liked the first Thor, um, and I thought the second Thor was fine, so I, I actually loved the first Thor. Um, but you can see from the first Thor, directed by someone different, and then the, the Thor, directed by Taiko uh, Watiti, that this just like it, it just, it so had his, you know, <laughs> that was like so a Taika Waititi movie, you know what I mean? Or even, yeah. So anyway, setting the tone is just what's the movie going to feel like and how does it, and what feeling is, is, uh, is the audience going to feel when they, when they watch the movie. So, and that really setting the tone, that's just you, the director, finding your voice and, um, and figuring out how you want to do that. That. In setting the tone of a film, that takes practice. So you do it in short films first. Uh, and for, for, for me, it was pretty easy. I did a romantic comedy. I wasn't trying to bend genres too much. Um, uh, so romantic comedy, you make people laugh. And you hopefully you make them think a little. But, but mainly you just make people laugh. And then also, you got to respect the convention of a drama. So, uh, I'm sorry, convention. Respect the convention of a genre. And that's something that my favorite author... So, so one of my favorite authors, his name is Stephen Pressfield. And this is Stephen Pressfield. And um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, this is one of his jabs. He sell Anyway, so one of my favorite authors, Stephen Pressfield. This is called Dudeology, a writer's analysis of the Big Lebowski. But basically, um, he, what he does with this, he analyzes the movie The Big Lebowski... And he talks about what genre it is. Um, and it's pretty interesting. And he even talks about a, a movie as creative as The Big Lebowski. How it's the super original creative uh, movie. But how, and it's, I call it a comedy personally. But how The Big Lebowski is actually is in the genre of, it's kind of, I think he calls it a detective movie. He's like, and it actually does respect the, the detective Genre, and I was like, ah, here we go. The the dude abides, but in what genre? <laughs> so he says, um, so what's 
well, anyway, so he goes beat by beat and of, of Dudeology, The Big Lebowski. And I was kind of wondering, okay, what's the point of this when I was reading it? Not in a bad way, but once he gets to the end, he's saying that the genre, The Big Lebowski genre, is actually a detective story. And I was like, oh, I've always just thought of it as a comedy. And, and he says, and it respects the genre of, of a detective story while being original at the same time. So setting the tone is what genre do you want the movie to be in? For example, in my, uh, the fake movie I'm talking about, the Killer Clown movie, like what genre do you want it to be in? Do you, do you want it to be a detective movie? A, <laughs> a, kill, a killer clown movie that's also a detective story? I mean... That'd be kind of awesome. So, so anyway, he talks about that. And the other one he talks about is starting over part one. He gives a lot of advice on writing. Notes on the mental toughness required for a page one rewrite. And what he's talking about in this one is he wrote the first draft of a book. And his editor, his longtime editor, told him that, hey, um, this is you're not respecting the conventions of the genre you're writing in. And he's like, Oh crap, you're right. <laughs> so, excuse me. So, he had to rewrite it. So, the reason I bring that up is I made a romantic comedy, and there's certain conventions in a romantic comedy that you kind of have to respect. So, in my romantic comedy, gosh, I don't want to spoiler it, but at first it didn't necessarily have a happy ending. And I test screened it. I test screened it at a coffee shop, and people didn't like it. <laughs> No, they liked the movie. They liked my movie. They loved my movie. I do want to say that. Uh, they liked my movie, but they didn't like that the movie, because it's a romantic comedy, they didn't like that the movie didn't get a happy ending. Because romantic comedies, of, you know, of all, get a they get a happy ending. So what I had to do was write some new scenes, shoot some new scenes, and, 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 and add the happy ending. You know, it was still... It was a, a different kind of happy ending, but it was a happy ending. And um, so, and, and, and it made people happy. They like, I, I realized it needed the happy ending because that's what people wanted, but also uh, the happy ending gives people hope. Yeah, so if I didn't have that happy ending, it's almost like the movie saying, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not what I wanted to say with my movie. I wanted to say, like, everything's going to be okay. Like, that's what I wanted to say with my movie, but I didn't have a scene showing everything's going to be okay. So I had to show. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so, uh, yeah, and I'm very happy with the, the new scenes that we shot and all that, all that jazz. But anyway, you, you're, you're setting the tone for the movie. You're respecting whatever genre you're in. And, uh, yeah, so that's step two. Uh, so you're, you're setting the tone of a movie. All right, so last thing, step three, I kind of touched on this already, but step three of making a movie is you need to have like something to say. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. I'm not really great. I was, I do have a degree and I have a BA, a Bachelor's of Arts in English from Virginia Commonwealth University. So, but having said that, I'm not always great at saying like smart people stuff about movies. But, um, but if we're talking like Big Lebowski, for example, since I brought that up, um, ah, this is, uh, Stephen Pressfield and his analogy of duology, uh, the Big Lebowski, and it's just really, it, this book, this is so, so good. Uh, you can go to his website if you want these jabs, it's advice on, on, on writing stuff. But anyway, um, what I like, okay, okay, so, uh, what was my point? Uh, oh, because even I never thought about the Big Lebowski having like like a message, you know, I just thought it was this cool, funny movie. And then he's like, he's like, like, uh, he's like the dude, the Big Lebowski does have like a message. Like even if I don't know what the the Coen brothers, I don't know if they meant for it to have a message, but it's more fun when a movie has some kind of message. But OK. So since the dude is the detective, and if we're talking in a detective genre, I'm quoting, I'm quoting Stephen Pressfield, but the dude is the hero. The dude is a man with a code. The dude solves the case. Yeah, so basically, the, like the, 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 so the dude is like the good guy, basically, and that's a good thing. Um, uh, and I, I was like, oh, okay, it's just, I, I already thought The Big Lebowski was a good movie, but this, uh, 
this just kind of made me appreciate appreciate the movie even more. Um, but basically, like, the dude represents, like, the everyman. And the dude represents, like, uh, just being a good person. And, 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 and the dude, like, wins, right? Yeah, which is cool. So it's like, hey, sometimes good guys, not sometimes, a lot of times, good people do, uh, it does pan out for good people. And it panned out for the dude. <laughs> So that's the message of, in my opinion, The Big Lebowski. This is the internet. Feel free to, to go bonkers and, and disagree with me. It's all good. So, uh, but that's what I'd have to say about The Big Lebowski. But, okay, so that's having something to say. So The Big Lebowski had something to say. Um, so, yeah, and it doesn't have to, your movie doesn't have to be high art. It can be high art, by all means. Make something that's high art. But even the movie, like, Scream, uh, I'm a 90s kid, so there's the Scream franchise. Basically, I always liked the character Sydney because she just always was essentially kicking butt and being awesome and I don't know, she's cool. So <laughs> the message of Scream is be awesome. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, so uh, the message of, I don't know, I'm not great at right being poetic. One of my friends is great at it. But yeah, just have something to say. Like uh, your message could be eating vegetables is awesome or your message could be People should high five each other more. Or your message could be um, cereal is delicious. I don't if you're directing a commercial. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, whatever the message is, it doesn't have to be super profound. It can be if you're like a very profound person. But you just gotta think like, hey, what am? And uh, your number one um, thing you want to do when you direct a movie is you do want to entertain people. So. You know, that's why, let's say you're making a movie about killer clowns. That's why you need some creepy scenes with the killer clown uh, creeping out the audience. Because that's a genre, right? But you can do that. You can respect the rules of a genre and still have something to say. So, let's say, you know, you can have you can have fun and have all this... Yeah, you can just have fun and make a movie. But even your message could still be, hey, don't be mean. Or, hey, eat your vegetables. Whatever. Whatever you want your message to be. Uh, you just need to have something to say when you're making a movie. So, and just think about, you know, what do I want this movie to, like, say? So, like, even with, let's say, Harry Potter, Harry Potter's pretty much good versus evil, and that good should, you know, good is better than evil. And I completely agree. <laughs> good is better than evil. Absolutely. Okay, and usually good is stronger than evil. I totally agree with that, too. So, me and J.K. Rowling on the same page. So, okay, anyway. Uh, yes, have something to say when you make your movie because otherwise, what's the point? Uh, okay, and those are my three steps to make to directing movies. One is know what you want. Step two, set the tone of your movie. It's all up to you. It's all on you. And you got this. You can do this. All right, and then step three is have something to say. And those are my three tips on directing movies. Uh, okay, my call to action is that you, um... Oh, you check out, uh, subscribe to this channel, like this uh, video if you like it, and then uh, go bananas, go bonkers, and watch all the videos on my, my YouTube channel if you'd like. That'd be awesome. Um, and once you're done having a ball on uh, YouTube, you can also uh, check out all the links below this video, and you can go bananas by just going to my website. Uh, you can join my email list. If you join my email list, you immediately get access to a free PDF and video that's only available through my email list. Um, okay, so I grew up in an abusive home. I'm fine. Um, and I have all these daily habits that I do. Um, I used to deal with a lot of sadness. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, I dealt with a lot of sadness. Now, as an adult, I'm a pretty happy person, so I feel a lot of joy in my life. So I uh, write the five daily habits that I do every day just to feel good and awesome and amazing. So I put all these in a PDF. Uh, so if you go to my YouTube channel, you can subscribe. You get access to a video that's, that explains the daily habits. And you also get a free PDF that I designed that give you all the habits on how to feel more love, joy, and kindness in your life every day. So that's what you do if you join my email list. You can also check out my movie if you'd like. You can check out my movie trailer. Just uh, tons of free, awesome entertainment at my website. You can go bananas. My website is www.juliekerrstudios.com. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's my official call to action. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, and you feel a, a stirring in your heart and soul, then by all means, 
uh, direct a feature film. Uh, it, it will completely change your life. You will never be the same. Trust me, you won't. Um, you'll, it, 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 you'll, for the better, it will change you for the better. Uh, and and it, 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 it's, it's just awesome. It's the most awesome feeling in the world. It's a lot of work. It's a crap load of work, but it's awesome. It's amazing. It's 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 awesome work. So okay. So all right. That that's it. Uh, now yeah, you have my three tips. So I expect you to go make a feature film now. Uh, go for it. All right. So I'm Julie Kerr, writer and director of the romantic comedy Geek Loss Punk. Thank you so much for watching this. Go make movies. Go be awesome and, and be good to yourself today. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.